We are back trying to finish 11.1. So uh, this is our new uh, general term. We are asked to identify whether it's convergent or not. So let's start with the limit. Sn approaches infinity. n squared e to negative n. Again, this comes back. Uh, L'Hopital's rule. This approaches infinity, but this approaches 0. 0 times infinity is an indeterminate case. In order to apply L'Hopital's rule, we need to change it into either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. L'Hopital's rule is not applicable in any other cases but these two. Good. So a simple algebraic manipulation here does the trick. So e to negative n is the same with 1 over e to the n. At this point, we have infinity over infinity, which is this situation, and we can apply L'Hopital's rule. We will differentiate the top to get to n, we differentiate the denominator to get e to the n. We will continue differentiating because this is again infinity over infinity. And we are on page 6. Okay, so this is limit of 2 over e to the n as n approaches infinity. This is good enough. This approaches, uh, the limit is 0 because 2 divided by infinity. So then a sub n is convergent. Okay, that was 47. Let's uh, take a look at 49. On the same page, 736. And we have a sub n equals cosine squared n divided by 2 to the n. Okay. Um, so maybe I should mention here again, this is L'Hopital. L'Hopital's rule. This is in chapter 4. Calc 1. Here we're going to look at something else which is called the squeeze theorem. Which is in chapter 2 in Calc 1. So when we look at the limit as n approaches infinity of cosine squared n over 2 to the n, we have no way of, of dealing with this because I don't know what this is. This is d and e and this is 0. I mean, this is infinity, right? So d and e over infinity. So let's take a look and see what happens here. We always remember that cosine in general is a number between negative 1 and 1. This is a bounded function. But we don't have cosine. We have cosine squared. So then cosine squared n has to be a number between 0 and 1. I'm going to multiply all three sides based on the squeeze theorem by 1 over 2 to the n. So 1 over 2 to the n has to be never 0 and positive. And it is. So this side is 0. In the middle we have cosine squared n over 2 to the n. And on the right hand side we have 1 over 2 to the n. So because this as you see, both sides, this approaches 0, and this approaches 0, when n approaches infinity, when n approaches infinity, by the squeeze theorem, the middle part has to approach the same number. So now the first part, the first hypothesis of the um, squeeze theorem is that the, the function we are looking at is squeezed between two functions. The function from below is 0, and the function from above is 1 over 2 to the n. Second hypothesis, these two approach zero. They, their limits exist when n approaches infinity. They both limits exist, and they are the same number. Therefore, from here we conclude that the limit from cosine squared n over 2 to the n as n approaches infinity is also zero by the squeeze theorem. Knowing that, coming back to our answer here, then we know that this is convergent. A, A n, the uh, sequence we are talking about, is convergent. Good. 
Um, this was 49. Uh, let's look at 53. As you see, they're all different. Page 6, I'm on page 7 then. Um, 53. On the same page, 736. So we have a sub n equals 1 plus 2 over n um, raised to power n. It's a different situation. So let's look at the limit as n approaches infinity from 1 plus 2 over n raised to n. Okay, so we know that this piece approaches 1 and this approaches infinity. So 1 to infinity is another indeterminate case that we cannot conclude. We have to work hard for this one. So the first step is we denote, so step number one, we denote this by y. It's our function. In step number two, we apply log to both sides. So natural log y equals n, natural log of 1 plus 2 over n. In step number three, we apply the limit to both sides. Limit as n approaches infinity from natural log y equals limit as n approaches infinity from n natural log of 1 plus 2 over n. We're trying to determine this limit now. Okay, I see that this approaches infinity, but here natural log of 1, this will approach 0. So again, I have 0 times infinity, an indeterminate case, and I have to use L'Hopital's rule. But not yet. It's not applicable yet. So a simple algebraic manipulation here, again, for 0 times infinity. So limit as n approaches infinity. Do not bring natural log anywhere. Leave that alone. And change n over 1 into 1 over 1 over n. So this function is the same with this function. When you flip n, you get that. But now, this serves the purpose of showing that this is 0 and this is 0. When n approaches infinity, this approaches 0. When n approaches infinity, this approaches 0. And this is perfect for L'Hopital's rule. I will differentiate the top. And I get 1 over 1 plus 2 over n times the inner function prime, which is negative 2 over n squared divided by the denominator prime, negative 1 over n squared. So, again, let me uh, uh, explain again what I did. Natural log of a function prime is 1 over that function times the inner function prime. 1 prime is 0, 2 over n prime is negative 2 over n squared. And 1 over n prime is negative 1 over n squared. I will simplify these two but there is a 2 left in here. So negative 2 over n squared with negative 1 over n squared, everything goes away except the 2. So then we have limit, finally. I shouldn't say finally, it's not done. n approaches infinity, 2 over 1 plus 2 over n. So finally, when we apply the limit, this is 0. 2 over 1 is 2. This is step 3. Now in step 4, I'm just going to copy the beginning and the end of step 3. So, page 8. So, in step 4, I have limit as n approaches infinity from natural log y equals 2. Now we're going to swap the operators. The inner operator becomes the outer operator. The outer operator becomes the inner operation, operator because of continuity. This is continuous. So continuity allows us to swap the operators. There is a theorem in continuity in Chapter 2 under continuity. So I'm allowed to swap. So then I have natural log of the limit as n approaches infinity of y equals 2. OK, now we are solving this equation. And we know that the base is e. So e raised to the second power has to equal this. So then limit as n approaches infinity of y. Now I'm going to copy. This is y. 
So 1 plus 2 over n to the nth power e to this power equals this, this. So e squared. So therefore, we conclude that a, oh, we conclude that a sub n is convergent. Okay, very good. Let's see what else is here. This was 53. Uh, let's also look at 55. How am, I, how am I with time? Good, good, very good. So 55 on 736. So we have a sub n equals natural log 2n squared plus 1 minus natural log of n squared plus 1. So I will condense this into natural log of 2n squared plus 1 over n squared plus 1. And now I will find the limit as n approaches infinity from natural log of 2n squared plus 1 over n squared plus 1. And yes, we have to apply the limit. And I have to apply the limit inside first. We showed an example in which we factored and so on and so forth because the same degree of the same degree, this limit is 2. So then natural log 2. So therefore, a sub n is convergent. We found the limit. And also, uh, let's look at, um, uh, let's look at 59 on the same page, 736. And we have a sequence given to us as 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on and so forth. This is obviously divergent. A sub n does not approach a number. And finally, we want to look at uh, determine whether the sequence is increasing, decreasing, in other words, monotonic increasing or decreasing or not monotonic and is it bounded so let's take a look at 79 on page 737 and we have a sub n equals 1 over 2n plus 3 so first of all in order to show monotonic increasing or decreasing so increasing decreasing From chapter 3, we know that if the derivative of a function is positive, the function is increasing. Or if the derivative of a function is um, less than 0, then the function is decreasing. All I'm going to do, I'm going to look at this as a function. I'm going to say let f of x be 1 over 2x plus 3. And I want to find f prime. And f prime of x because the, the best thing to do is replace this by 2x plus 3 to negative 1 because it's easier to differentiate. Bring down the power, subtract 1 from the power, times the inner function prime, which is 2. So then we have negative 2 over 2x plus 3, everything squared. Since this is always a positive number, but it has a minus in front. So obviously, this is always less than 0. If this is always less than 0, then we conclude that a sub n is monotonic decreasing. If it's monotonic decreasing, then a sub 1 must be its maximum. So what is a sub 1? 1 over 5. Now, let's find its limit limit as n approaches infinity from 1 over 2n plus 3. This is 0. As n approaches infinity, 1 over infinity approaches 0. So then we can write that a sub n is found between, oh, not equal symbol, because this is a limit, strictly greater than 0, but definitely less than or equal to 1 fifth. So now let's Picture this. We want to picture this. We go to y equals. I'm sorry. Let's go to mode first. So please change 
the mode this time into sequence. Not function, not parametric, we did that, not polar, we did that, so now sequence. So um, we're going to look at 1 over, don't forget parentheses around 2x plus 3, or actually 2n plus 3, same thing. And we would like to picture this by graphing it. And you can see it starts at 1 fifth, this is 1, gets closer and closer to 0. Right? So 0 is not attainable because that's the limit. So decreasing, monotonic decreasing and uh, convergent, of course. Any sequence that is monotonic and bounded from below and above is always convergent. This is one of the results that we wrote um, during the first video of this. Convergent. Thank you.